What's up, everybody? Welcome to Indie Music Live, episode 222. As always, I'm JoJo Keys, and I'm wearing my blue shirt this week. Last week, I told you about my green shirt, or I guess two weeks ago now, three weeks ago, something like that. And uh, this week, I'm wearing my blue shirt with waves on it. Dave, what are you wearing? Gorgeous. What color it's, is your underwear, Dave? Oh, mine's like pretty, pretty bland today, but that's very nice, Joe. The waves of the ocean. Very exciting. Yeah, cool. I look good in blue, in baby blue. Speak for yourself, jeez. What's up, Dave? It's been a couple of weeks. Yeah, for sure, man. I just, uh, yeah, I mean, my other projects have, I've kind of uh, keep me in another world. Time flies like that. Strippers will do that to you. Yep, yep, <laughs> behind the screen, man. Strippers and cash. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, so uh, we uh, had an election and stuff. Uh, I guess we still don't officially know what's going on, but hey, that's life, right? We never really know exactly what's going on until you're like, oh, it's over there. So, all right, so we're going to check out some, uh, well, Elizme tonight. Uh, this girl's growing up. Uh, she's been around the Indie Music Plus land for pretty much the whole time, if I remember right. Yeah, I think uh, so, man. We were right playing from the her beginning. in one of our very first episodes, and uh, she was just like, something like 16 or something like that. And now she's in like her middle or probably her early twenties, I guess, 21, 22. And man, she, not only, I mean, she's growing up, you know, but she's also <laughs> vocally and musically, she's growing up a lot. So let's check out uh, her new single uh, that was on the website a few months back. This is called foreign to me and we'll be right back. Coming at me, I don't even know why. Why I attract it, I got good intentions. I'm a blessing, I don't need to mention it to you. The way you got me thinking is unreal. But baby, I don't trust you, let's be real. Bad boys always come my way. So, someone please don't pass me the repellent spray. It's crazy what love can do, and then it blinds you from the truth. Take a bet, I wanna see what path you choose Cause I don't need, yeah, I don't need You baby, I'm fine, just me But I can't help but let you in I wanna see if you are not like that And we're back. That's Elizme with four on to me. She used to be called Elizme Hayes. Um, I think she changed the name just to make it easier, you know, kind of like Prince or whatever. I don't know. But uh, um, growing up, good stuff. Her, produ her production getting much better, like who she hooks up with producing wise. I know that her mom is a big support to her, too. Hopefully still is. Uh, but um, I would like this girl to come out with a full length album instead of singles. I think it's just been all singles for years and years is my only thing. Yeah, I mean, that's debatable. We, we've talked about that with a lot of artists in terms of the strategy with how they release just because we are we live in a singles world now. But um, anyway, yeah, the, the maturation process, yeah, it's like one of my favorite things with this project. Is language. <laughs> the maturation process. Yeah, uh, no, she's, uh, she's, yeah. She's really got like got something, I think. I've always thought that if she hooked up with the right manager or label or whatever, that she could have a hit song, you know, or a couple of hit songs. Well, whatever. yeah, I mean, the she keeps leveling up, you know, there there's a 
bunch of artists that kind of fall in that class that we've kind of been documenting the whole time. Production just keeps getting tighter and better and, you know, more stellar each time. And, uh, this is just, it's a perfect example. Like I, I was hearing a little, maybe Nelly Furtado in her delivery on, uh, on this song is almost kind of like, almost like an abbreviated delivery. You know, she's not just like projecting like super aggressively or anything. Uh, and, but you remember her, right? Nelly Furtado. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not too big on the, uh, like top 40 pop stuff necessarily. I mean, she, I know she's like real alternative for that too, but I would think more, if you want to check out a girl name or ever heard of a girl named Estero, that's sort of where I go to, but it's the same, same vein, you know, the, the, uh, R and B flavored, you know, uh, girl singer stuff with an cool. attitude. <laughs> yeah. She's entering diva status, man. Yeah, 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 exactly. So cool. Tonight, this is uh, when we bring in our featured artist, Mr. Desmond Parson. How you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing well, and yourself? Good, man. Thanks for uh, coming back. Uh, nobody really knows this, but last week we had some some cluster effort issue issues, and uh, <laughs> uh, you were gracious enough to hang out for 45 minutes and then come back this week and do the exact same thing. So thanks for being here, man. Oh, thanks for having me. I certainly appreciate it. Cool. So this is when I um, sort of make the featured artist give their elevator pitch, if you will, you know, quick 30 second spiel. If I was walking down the street and I, you told me, oh, I do music and you're like, and I'm like, oh, cool. That's what kind of music do you do? Just tell us a little bit about who you are and what you're doing. And we'll, we're going to uh, check out your song, Searching. Yes. Yes. So this is Desmond Parson from the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, been in love with music since I was about four. My first instrument was actually a coffee table. <laughs> um, before I learned the piano, I um, emulated my musical heroes. And obviously, as you can see behind me, uh, Stevie Wonder has been a huge influence. So Pretty obvious in your music, too. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. So um, I used the coffee table as my instrument, and then it grew to the little Casios. And um, here we are today, a songwriter, arranger, producer, uh, trying to anyway. And um, so I'm just fortunate to have a new project coming out this Friday. The new me available in all digital formats. So I'm just, you know, huge fan of music. I'm certainly excited, uh, double excited because Friday's release date is also my birthday. So oh, nice. Happy birthday. Awesome. Thank you. 22, 23, I'm guessing. Um, 23. <laughs> <laughs> no, I honestly 44. I'm looking nice. at I'm knocking on 44. So. Right on. We're all in that same neighborhood. So yeah. hey man, the kid, the kids are dyeing their hair gray, man. It, you, you yeah, yeah. I can't tell anymore. <laughs> That's a you know, I beat them to it. This is a good time of life. I'm I'm enjoying this time of life for myself. So I don't know about you, but early forties awesome. is pretty pretty cool, man. You're like an adult now, you know, and but you're not like a, you know, a young adult in their twenties and thirties making stupid mistakes anymore. So <laughs> exactly cool. So let's check out your song "Searching," and uh, we'll be right back and get deeper with Dave. Yep. Oh, my God. 
All right, Desmond Parson, man, that we were chatting last week just about uh, some of the old heroes, you know, like Earth, Wind, and Fire, and even that producer David Foster worked with uh, Chicago, and but obviously, yeah, Stevie Wonder, man. So I think that's the obvious influence. Like, if you did not mention him, honestly, I would have brought him up. Uh, even if oh. we didn't see the picture behind you, I would have still brought him <laughs> up. <laughs> But it's just, I mean, obviously it's the vocal, it's the delivery style, the the tone, the range, uh, the different uh, keyboard patches, like the organ and the piano and all the different kind of phaser sounds going on in there. Uh, it's like, yeah. you, you, I mean, yeah, you hear it. I'm not saying you're like, you're copying him, but it's definitely a strong influence. So, uh, yeah, what, what, I mean, rather than avoid it, why don't you just uh, talk about the early years you know with just the the impact like once you uh, how you felt when you first heard his music sure um so we're talking 79 80 so we're it's on the heels of songs in the key of life but i'm three and four and so my grandmother i grew up with my grandmother and so um she's played all the types of music from your teddy pendergrass to the michael jackson's but there was one uh, artist in particular and I believe it was the talking book album that um it's actually my number one Stevie Wonder album. It's just, it's just the warmth of the, the analog synths, um, Stevie in his prime. And so it's around that time, but this, we're talking hotter than July, uh, Secret Life of Plants, that, you know, post songs in the Key of Life, Stevie, that I, co I come to know. And that's who I started to emulate around that time. And so just the different textures, as you said, the different textures and the synths or the, the piano and um, and this crosses all genres. If you look at album covers, I mean, part of the, I guess, the experience of listening to the new music was just going through the the cover art to see who did what, to see um, uh, who produced, you know. And I'm yeah, so it was the whole experience, man. I, exactly. I was, I was like, what about just just the sound? Like, like I mean, obviously, I would assume you had listened to other forms of music before you heard. Sure. Stevie Wonder, and all of a sudden you hear this guy, and it's just like, like what happened in your head just at that moment? Well, it was, it was blown away because, um, you know, my my aunts were telling me, you know, he's blind, and I, I couldn't fathom um, playing. I, I need to see what I'm doing, you know. And he has to see what he's doing. There's no way <laughs> he can play. Right. And so, so you, I'm this is kid logic. So, <laughs> um, and so I was just engulfed, and so. Uh, for me and, and anyone who knows me, whoever I um, uh, admired, I became. So there were three people, I'm not ashamed to say, there were three people that I emulated between, I guess, the ages of four and six. Stevie Wonder, of course, uh, Superman and Popeye. Just <laughs> <laughs> Popeye, yeah, man. The I forgotten had, hero. <laughs> but I, I hated spinach, right? But um, <laughs> so um, I, with, with Stevie, um, I, 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 every time he did an award show or every time he did a uh, some type of a performance, why is he, you know, why is he positioned like this? Why? And so it, it grew into, let me, around the 80s, if you recall, that's when the little toy keyboard started to become all the rat, uh, the fad of maybe 84, 85, where you can play maybe a little melody on a little yeah. Casio keyboard. <laughs> yeah, sure. I had a few of those. Yeah. Yeah. I, I carve out melodies from there and that's, that was the conversion from just being an admirer and an emulator to, huh, what happens if I play this? And actually, I had an uncle with that when I was about maybe 10 years old who actually showed me some melodies. And so from there, uh, the other keyboards and then my just fascination for playing the piano just grew. And So I, I was also delighted just to see the, the Earth, Wind and Fire mention in a bio. I, I don't know if I recall seeing that in any artists we've reviewed. And some of their tunes are some of my favorites of all time. I mean, The Way of the World, that's just one of my favorite songs oh, yeah. ever. It's like top yeah. 10. Uh, that band, uh, I, I, I think it's one of the bands where I think a lot of people in their 30s, 40s, and obviously older uh, definitely know their music, may have forgotten the name of the, you know, like who sang it. But when you right. play the song, like, oh my God, yeah, of course. Uh, vocal range just off the charts with with all those guys oh yeah oh, and yeah. just the beats the catchy melodies all that stuff so uh 
Yeah. Do you, did you kind of withdraw the same thing I was saying from there? I did. I did. As a matter of fact, the same uncle who uh, actually uh, showed me how to play the keyboard was the same uncle who introduced me to Earth Under Fire. I was a little older, so maybe uh, we're talking 10, and that's the way of the world, gratitude, uh, those 75, 76 albums. Um, I was just amazed. And this is the first time I started to talk music talk. So Maurice White, just a genius. And so yeah. um, just that that whole ride, that 70s um, string of albums that Earth, Wind & Fire produced was uh, another reason. And so uh, Maurice White helped me. There, it's like, I think you said last week, it's like, yeah, it's like the tr transition coming out of disco into pop, maybe around like yeah. the late 70s. Exactly. And just kind of redefi redefining maybe the less interesting <laughs> aspects of disco yeah. as, as <laughs> right yeah. after like the uh that chicago white Sox game i think where they like destroyed <laughs> right <laughs> it was it like the amazed. disco demolition night and then it, it it was like it was dead like the next day disco yeah was dead, right i remember that right yeah. right <laughs> so yeah those guys were amazing they were another if i had a top three uh stevie wonder of course earth and fire michael jackson so those three um, had a humongous uh, impact on my, uh, you know, probably to the point where I don't even recognize it. Anymore. All right. So last thing I wanted to cover with you, we, we've had quite a few artists that kind of fall into this classification where they, they're like a double, triple, quadruple threat. You know, it's like they're amazing artists in and of themselves, but they're also a producer for other artists or, you know, creative director, just all these different aspects of the music industry. And I just always like to touch base on, you know, what, what's your greatest passion and all of that stuff. Like what, what feeds your soul the most and what's oh. more just like a job? Like how, how do you view all of it? I guess. Well, uh, I would say recording for me is probably where, um, I, I feel the most comfortable and the, and the pa most passionate because you have total control over the, the palette of what you're doing. Um, uh, my process is usually the chords. I'm a keyboard player, so I'm kind of crafting what I want this, uh, this uh, part of the song to sound like. And then well, let me add this bass. So playing with the different textures of music. So I would say a composer is probably where I'm the most passionate. Number two would be my uh, performing. Um, I have a band that I perform with, uh, Soul Fire Village. And so once we're in sync and, and the music is going and everything is, you know, we're hitting on all cylinders. Uh, so I'm very passionate about just performing and singing, but composing, I would say, would top that list. All right, cool, man. All right, we're going to move on to the next artist. Thanks, Desmond, so much for uh, coming by. And, uh, chatting oh. with us for a bit awesome thank you guys for having me certainly appreciate it Sorry. yeah so why uh, are you active on social media where can people find you yes i'm on instagram at i am desmond underscore parson you can also check my website at www.desmondparson.com also on facebook as well all right cool excellent rob if you're ready to rock we're going to bust right into apollonian heart by pulse park Let's do this.
Apollonian Heart by Pulse Park. This uh glad you said it and not me. Yeah, man. I really, really dig this tune right here. And and <laughs> I was I was I was really like uh struggling to find some uh influences on this man. And I think I'm proud to say I, I couldn't think of anyone. I, I and that's actually a compliment. Sure. Because like usually I'm able to just find it's like, oh, it kind of sounds like him, kind of. It's like they have this really unique mix of just different different genres and different like eras. You know, it's not totally like there there's just a little pinch of 80s uh pop in there, but there's so many uh cool elements going on that really make it modern and and it you know, yeah, what you got something to say, man. What? Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, when, I was, when I was listening to it, the only thing that really came, uh, I mean, it's good stuff. It's totally like producers kind of stuff and like uh, um, Cocteau and Cranberries in a lot of ways to me. Some of those influences I heard. Um, that's what I enjoyed was like the guitars. I really like spacey guitars a lot. So, but I mean, yeah, it's just an easy tune to listen to. It's, it definitely could be on one of my playlists for sure. Yeah, and it was catchy, and the rhythm section was smooth and and warm, but it, but it had these effects on it where, you know, it wasn't boring. You know, it, it was just it was a it was just a really unique experience listening to it. It's very cool song. So, cool. All right. So, any final words tonight, Dave? Any uh, any new? I don't know. Sex dolls no. or anything that you have? <laughs> no, just like preparing for this big shift, just in this. Uh, What's going on in the country? life? <laughs> life, new president. I mean, I, that's I, weird, isn't it? It is. It, yeah, just kind of watching the reactions of people. Uh, but we're uh, going to stay the same as we have for the last five years. So, can you believe it? It's been five years, over five years now. It's crazy. Yeah, I just, I don't what know. Do I, do I, hope the, I hope the vibe in the nation uh, improves uh, pretty quickly. I, it seems like it might. So, I don't know. I hope. I hope things start to just reflect less division and, you know, more connection with people. So when our all starts with you, Dave, you have to get out of your apartment every once in a while. And then yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm getting there. All right. Hicks video, H I X V E I. What am I talking about? H I X V I D E O. I want to spell one of these days. Uh, we need professional live streaming production. Rob is your man. He's been with us for a long time. since about episode 35. And if you want to go down a little, uh, uh, what do you call memory road or whatever you want to call it. A um, sentimental you know, journey. A little sentimental journey. Uh, for the next six weeks, seven weeks, we're going to be posting a lot of older videos from our older podcasts and uh, live stream shows until we catch up to recent time. And then we'll be posting them accordingly. Uh, but uh, check them out. There's a lot of good stuff in there, a lot of good music, and uh, you can kind of see where we started and where we are now. So I'm just a little grayer. That's about it. So we'll catch you next week. Thanks for watching and have a good week.